righty, here we are, the next adventure. It is Mallard Roost. It's on the Elkhart River. It's a wetland conservation area. This is a nice, nice little boat ramp here. It's actually a boat ramp, so ease of access is like really easy since you can back up to the water. Uh, this is a hunting area, so during hunting seasons, like September through February, probably should just stay away and go to somewhere else. Um, just respect the hunters and make sure you don't get shot on accident. Now, this trip is basically if you were to put the bayou and the Everglades together. This first part is a lot like the Everglades, and then towards the end of the trip, towards ramp number one, it's a lot like the bayou. So uh, let's hit the water. And... All right, we're in the Everglades right now. I mean, the closest to the Everglades is you're gonna find in Indiana. I don't think we got any pythons. Um, what else? No nutria. We do have muskrats and garter snakes. But I don't know. No, uh, no iguanas either. No alligators. We do have gar. Um, maybe some salamanders, but I don't know. This is as close as we got to Florida in Indiana. It's been about a quarter mile. And the Everglades are kind of starting to turn into the bayou. We got these willow trees here. I like to imagine they're cypress trees. Maybe this is the mangroves. So we're still in Florida. It's just give it a little time and we'll make it over to Louisiana. But right now we're still in Florida. I'm in a narrow straightaway here. I was hitting up to four miles an hour at a leisurely paddle. I mean leisurely three mile an hour. Give it a little extra gas. I uh, well, right now I'm at four, not even three to four. You see how fast I'm paddling. There's a lot of it that's like this. It just gets narrow. So it's got nice, nice fast current. Not fast, but decent. So it's real easy paddling. Yeah, there's these bogs of duckweed that have like floated and like collected. They're like little floating islands for the birds. But yeah, I'm staying pretty steady at three miles an hour, occasionally hitting four. I'm obviously paddling pretty decent. It's already after six o'clock at night. I plan on fishing going upstream and that wasted a lot of time and didn't catch anything um, so here it is six in the evening I got to paddle three miles back to the truck or so getting ready to leave the Everglades and go to the bayou Cajun country Got a little bog stuck on a tree here, but there's enough room to get around it. They call this place Mallard Roost, but you mostly see wood ducks here. It's a lot better wood duck habitat than mallard habitat. A lot of trees. And that's why wood is in the name of wood duck. Trees are wood, you know. Nice getting in the shade. Yeah, I'm getting hot out there in the Everglades. I'd say this is about, I don't know, one third shade, two thirds sunny. All right, this is your first real obstacle. I don't know if it's here all the time, but this is one of those bogs I was talking about. 
It is duckweed that's all jammed up on down trees and stuff. So it is one heck of a paddle to get through here. <clears throat> that was a treat. I would explain this, the consistency of this to be porridge and the smell. Oh, I don't know, it's pure methane. I can't even describe it. it smells like a swamp. Oh, I need to smack myself in the face with it. Uh, there's a buried fiber optic cable here. Kind of smells like one of those factory hog farms. And if you're wondering, my speedometer says zero miles an hour right now. Yeah. Smells like nasty hog farm. Alrighty, we're through the bog. Ugh. If you got a weak stomach, this probably isn't the trip for you. Like I said, I don't know if that's their year round or just because the water went up and down and I don't know. Now I'm doing another part. Oh, there's a down tree here all the way across and a bog. So I'm going to send it hard, try to get it across as straight as possible. Oh, that was easy, but now I'm going to do another one. But that's okay. Because I could have got stuck on that sideways and been in a real pickle. Alright, that was that was pretty painless. A few more trees up here. I think I can get around them just fine. There's really not too many obstacles on this stretch of the river. Um, there is this stretch here that, well, the last 10 years, it seems like there's always some kind of downed tree. So, let's sweep here. How do I get through this? Oh, I could pedal around it, but I'm just gonna go over this log, I think. Oh yeah, it's a floater. I could have went around it, but that would have been would have been a little difficult. All right, now this uh, this part of the trip, I'm starting to be able to hear the highway. It's uh, US 6. The first half, it, it was actually, seemed like I was like in total nature. Um, the second half is kind of along the, inter not the interstate, the highway. But at least it's in the shade. It's like you're either in the shade and by the highway or out in nature and in the sun, so 
I don't know, it's still really nice. It's a nice paddle going downstream. Uh, somewhat pleasant going upstream. I just, I just did it, to tell you the truth. Plan on going about half as fast upstream, so probably two mile an hour max. I don't know, if you're a good paddler, more. But a leisurely paddle, probably two mile an hour. But like I said, I'm I'm at a steady paddle going like three and a half. Pretty much there was just that one one set of obstacles with those trees down. Um, I guess there's obstacles along the way. We got all these sweepers, the trees down in the water. Those can flip you over easy if you're not paying attention. Oh, there goes the merganser. Oh, no, those are some kind of dodo birds. See them up there? Oh, uh-oh, that was, that was chupacabra. Oh no, just another dodo bird. Man, that was close and it was screeching at me. Yeah, it looks like that storm that came through really, uh, really hit this place hard. All these cattails have blown over. Not all of them, but there's a lot of cattails blown over. And it's not from the current knocking them over like there was a flood or anything. The water isn't always up in the trees like this. It's, it's probably in the trees quite a bit, but we got a lot of rain the last week or so, or a couple weeks ago. Um, so the water's probably coming back down. I don't think there's a USGS report on this one. You'll just have to take my word that the water's a little higher than normal right now. Uh, but when it's low, um, I still don't think I ever had to drag a kayak through here when it was low, so not a big deal. I think I hear the bridge where the ramp is. Yep, we're almost back. I was booking it less than an hour. All right. It's the bridge, the final destination. Sounds like there's a train coming. It's just a semi. I was hoping there wasn't a train on the road. Alrighty, then once you're past the bridge, just keep looking to the right. Oh, there's a turtle. It's not what you're looking for. You're looking for a boat ramp. Hmm, where is it? Oh, it's up here. Alrighty, there's the boat ramp. That was easy. Here is the launch. Let's see if my truck's still there. This is the downstream ramp. Oh, here's my truck. My Crocs are still there. Cool. Um, definitely have something to bug spray. There's some deer flies here right now that are pretty bad. US 6 and 750 North. This is where we would be pulling out unless we want to paddle upstream and then back down, which is what I just did. Um, so if you want to take one vehicle, park here, paddle up as far as you want, and then turn around and come back. So the nearest town is Wawaka, Indiana, over there. And then we got Ligonier over there. Like I said, US 6, 750 North. All right, I hope you found this video informational and entertaining. So uh, if you're up in this area, I recommend trying this out uh, with these gas prices. It really doesn't hurt to just bring one vehicle, park at this ramp, 
paddle upstream as far as you feel like um, and then you can just come back down it doesn't take much energy to come back down so till the next adventure see you next time from ramp to ramp it is about two and three quarters miles long uh, if you want to start at the downstream ramp on us 6 you can kayak upstream as far as you want if you're just paddling downstream from ramp to ramp expect it to be about one to two hours of a paddle there's no usgs data on this stretch of river it was a little high in this video but i don't remember a time i've been there where i had to portage access is easy there's a boat ramp where you put in and pull out obstacles are logs and that one bog that i got stuck in the flow is steady at an average rate the scenery is wetlands and wildlife if you're into breweries there is a brewery on us6 about a quarter mile away from the boat ramp 